Well, hello everyone. I am super excited about this. Um, we had a mass contest and now we are interviewing um, our winners and I'm super excited to have Lisa Irvin with us today. She is very well known with the Arts Council from gosh, artists and residents to our summer camps, all kinds of things, which I was super excited to see your mask and I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and skip over to that picture of your mask because I bet most people unless they know you they don't know that you're a fiber artist and so I loved the detail knowing you know about you and your art but for those that don't really know that much about you can you give us a little bit of background about who you are and and how you got started in the arts yeah so I mean I've been making art my whole life and I went to college for art I picked up knitting when I was in college and within like a month or two, I was just hooked, addicted. You know, <laughs> it was, it just became, it, yeah, it took over my life essentially. Um, so I have a degree in painting and when I was doing my final paintings for my VFA show, I started painting pictures of things that were knitted and it just kind of took off from there. And that's basically what I've been doing since then. And that's been like eight years. Um, so normally I create imaginary knitted landscapes with like floating knitted balls and forms and things like that but um, in this case it's obviously a little bit more literal uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> to say so, the least but um yeah in terms of like the inspiration for this obviously you guys see the iconic landscape places of Bryan College Station um when I was trying to come up with an idea I knew that I wanted to incorporate things that were important to me in this community because I moved here about seven, maybe eight years ago. I can't oh. even count anymore. <laughs> to do the Navasota Artist in Residency, and I fell in love with Brian College Station after that, so I stuck around. And, you know, Kyle Field and Queen Theater, and specifically, and, you know, those two places are really iconic to our area. and. You know, when I think of this this town, this community, those are you know things I think of, and those are icons of the town. So, I knew I wanted to do that. I knew I wanted to incorporate places that were important to our community and were important to me. But I also wanted to make sure that I incorporated the knitting aspect because that's so important to my style of artwork. So, you know, I was just trying to figure it out, and I originally kind of wanted to make the buildings knitted too, but I knew that that would just be too hard. So I ended up just going with the idea that they're kind of growing out of the knitted ground and then, you know, the sky is knitted too. Well, I'm sure you could have done it. I don't think it's too hard for you. I think uh, trying to get that in the time that we needed to, to yeah, get them and back. I, I think that it was more of a time constraint than too hard for you, young lady. For sure. And I didn't realize they were going to be this small. So, I mean, if I had decided to do that, I would have been using like a hair on a brush for some of the details. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. And I'm, I'm super excited you chose, chose this because this really does represent our community and I can easily see why you fell in love with our community and stayed because we do have a fantastic giving community. I, I couldn't ask for a better community to live in. It's just so, so awesome. And yeah. the detail that you have, most people can't see it on this picture, but um, we've had like the TV and newspaper come out and you know, do some interviewing and um, they uh, talk about how detailed this one is. And um, yeah, it's one of those that you just have to come and see it for yourself. And yeah, I actually, I wrote ACBV masterpiece on the Marquee of the Queen. I don't know if you can tell, but yes, yes, <laughs> I loved it. I was like, Oh my gosh. Then you can't, I don't even know if you can see that in this picture. It's really blurry because I used like the tiniest brush possible. Yeah, no, it, it was awesome. Yeah. I was like, check that girl out. I love it. I love it. And I, I know that's why when, when you came into your residency, just talking with you about what all you have, have done to grow in your art and um, man, it's just really neat to hear how some of our programs have really helped grow artists such as yourself. And so, wow, super exciting. Oh my gosh, man. And I, I love how you did it like in a, in the night scene. Yeah. I knew that I wanted it to be nighttime. Um, 
mainly because blues are easier to paint, but also because I wanted the neon of the signs and the lights from places to really kind of pop and glow. Um, you know, the Queen and La Salle especially have those iconic signs that you just, you need to see them at night. And then the, um, the light of the, that's a clock tower, right? Yes. For yes. a &M. Okay. I don't yes. know a &M very well. I'm not an Aggie, but um, I knew that that was an iconic place in, in College Station, so. No, very, very well done. So as you were doing this and it, and it's going on a mask, like what was that, what was going through your mind as we're going through this pandemic and we're all having to wear a mask and what, what I guess, how has art and everything that's going on affected you? Well, so I'm a teacher by day and so an art teacher and that definitely affected me because we had to go in quarantine in March and we didn't come back until August. Right. Um, and I was so excited at first because like, yes, more time to make art. And I did, I did knock out a couple of paintings, but by like April, end of May, I was just tired. Like I just was ready to be done with everything. So like when I was working on this, which is the first art project that I had really done since probably like the beginning of May. Oh, so it was wow. really nice to kind of have an excuse to go back into the studio and an excuse to make art again. And it didn't have to be, it was like, it almost felt like there was no pressure because it wasn't anything that was a part of my normal series. So I didn't have to live up to my standards. <laughs> I just had to make it happen. Um, and it was really nice. I, I really enjoyed, you know, I don't do buildings very often. And so it was kind of, it was a little bit of a leap for me, but it was also like less pressure as well. And that was just great. So it was a really good opportunity for me to just, sit back and make some art again. Get back to that playful spirit, huh? Yeah, yeah. I love it, I love it. So if there's anyone listening and they are hesitant on starting art, what would you tell them? Um, don't be. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of my students, you know, my students, I'll show them my artwork and they're like, well, you're too good. I'm never gonna be that good, blah, 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 blah. And I have to remind them that we all started somewhere and that we all, you know, you have to practice, you have to, in order to get good, you have to be able, wanting to dedicate the time to do it. But there really is no such thing as bad art. If you're willing to take a minute and sit down and draw something, then I think that you're dedicating that time and you're making good art, you know, whether or not it, you think it's good, other people might think it's good, or, you know, it's a practice. You just have to keep practicing and not be so scared to take that leap. That's right. I totally agree because art definitely can do something for you inside and out. And that's one of the things I think has been so unique seeing um, this contest was all the different uh, creations. Like every one of y'all um, have a different feeling for uh, what is going on. And it's really neat to see how what you created kind of gives you a picture of that. And, and like you said, you know, what's most important to you and this community is absolutely hugely important. And um, you picked a very nice, I love it, super awesome. Is there anything you wanna add before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. I mean, I pretty much talked about everything I needed to talk about, you know, you hitting on the community thing. I think our community is really important right now, especially in this pandemic, mm -hmm. um, y'all should support everything local, the Arts Council, Downtown Bryan, you know, A&M, local Aggie things, you know, just keep, keep, keep on trucking and supporting those, those local communities. Yes, you're absolutely right. And so for those of you who don't know what all is happening here at the Arts Council, I'm going to give you some um, things that we're doing right now. So in our gallery right now, we have Danica, which was one of our former um, artists and residents about six or six six uh, years ago and she did fantastic work. Absolutely love her version of the um, national parks. And we also have uh, Brazos Valley Gibbs, which comes October 27th. And we actually have an amazing person who donated uh, a matching gift of 10,000. So that is our goal is to hit 20,000 thanks to this amazing, wonderful person. And then we also have another contest coming on so Lisa you should definitely get in on this it's a maybe I'm not very Texas <laughs> well whatever is Texas you just create something that you feel like is Texas I mean what you created on the mask could you never know that is very much Texas you can't get more <laughs> Texas than Texas A&M and downtown Bryan that's, that's true uh, that's, that's true. the only place in Texas you need to be anyway so <laughs> that's true 
exactly. And the contest ends on the 31st. So, so check out our website at acbd.org to get all the details on that. And it's going to be a collector's tumbler for our Boots and Barbecue event. And so as soon as we get everything done, we'll be selling these tumblers. And of course, you've got to come check out all these masks that our community has created. Absolutely amazing pieces of art. And they'll be here till November 14th. And then they're going to take a tour around our community galleries. And as always, thank you so much for all that you do for our community. And if y'all ever need anything, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help. And Lisa, thank you so much for all yeah. that you do. And I'm super excited that you are one of um, the mask winners and an outstanding job. Thank you. I really enjoyed it and I appreciate all you guys do too. Aw, thank you. You're too kind. Awesome.